It's October 11th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast is in terminate length. Episode number 573. Almost uh, forgot what it was. 573. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, you can't. Uh, damn it, you can't see this. <laughs> it's National Coming Out Day! Woo! Like today, right? That's the 11th, right? Yeah. Right? Yes. I knew it's like October something. Not very good at the numbers. It is officially. National Coming Out Day this year, 2020. Yay! Yes. If you I haven't think, realized I... from the over 10 years of Cubs Out Loud, we're gay. <gasps> I know. It's a surprise. Damon and I, kind of, me, half me, because you, no one can see it, but the, 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 the other two here, uh, um, uh, goofballs here. But we've got a nice little 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 image of of Kamina out. It's normally a GIF, but because of of uh, uh, things that don't Skype. work very well with Skype, uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't animate. But yeah, uh, and it's also big apparently because it's well, it's also square, and we got like the 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 not the more rectangular versus square. Yeah, which yeah, which. Saying that is weird because a square is a rectangle, but you know what I mean. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Geometry. I I, I was very good at math. <laughs> uh, I didn't like to. My grades wouldn't wouldn't say it, but that's only because I didn't show my work. I got the right answers. They just wanted me to show the work, and I'm like, no, this is the answer. What's so? I must have done it right if I got the answer right. Oh. <clears throat> anyway. So, it's coming so out Gary, there. what is that, that, that NCOD? Yeah, so uh, NCOD stands for National Coming Out Day. And hang on a moment because I didn't link it. Uh, we have actually covered this topic before. Oh. Five years ago. Oh. It's a refresher course. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it, it's been a little while since we um since we covered it. If you give me just a second, I'll look it up on a uh, on, um, on the on the wayback machine. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, go for that. Uh, October eleventh, twenty fifteen, episode three thirty four. I'm coming out. Ooh. And you better get this party started. Well, that's not the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, Ow. Copyright infringement all over the place. Um. No, it's not copyright infringement. It's fair use because we're not using the actual audio and we're just saying the lyrics. It's fine. Well, I bet if we did, <laughs> if we did actually play the lyric. <laughs> By the way, I just I just want to say that I prefer this really bassy version of uh, "Get the Party Started" uh, over oh, yes. the pink version. Don't get me wrong; I really like the pink version too. Right. It's just surely bassy. I mean, it's surely bassy. Do I need to say more? Yeah. I mean, you might because not everyone is. You know, if you don't know surely <laughs> bassy, there's something wrong with you. You need to get that hole punched on your gay card. I'm done. <clears throat> anyway is it this one or this one um so yeah five years ago uh we all talked about this before mm. but it's a little been a little while um so i thought we might um <clears throat> give ourselves just a little like uh refresher for sure so speak. Mm -hmm. and, and, and kind of updates because we got we do have a few links of of newer stuff that Correct. has happened which uh, uh one of them is great just because of the butts, but not because they show them, but because when you see them doing their normal work. Right. Plus, so, plus, um, it, plus it, there there are times when packages <laughs> and you... Okay. Even though I think they're supposed to be wearing cups, but... 
the same. Yeah. So, Gary, what is National Coming Out Day? (laughs) (laughs) So, um, we did discuss it, I think, in the previous episode, so we don't need to do a a full breakdown, but there's going to be a series of links. One of them is to Wikipedia, uh, Mm -hmm. which gives some history. So, um, National Coming Out Day, or NCOD, is observed on October 11th in the history. Um, It was inaugurated in 1988, uh, which would now be 32 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was done uh, by two people, uh, Robert Eichberg and Jean O'Leary. Um, Eichberg has since passed on from uh, complications from AIDS, uh, but they did it um, kind of as a piece to go uh, in line with the anniversary of the 1987 National March on Washington. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, there has been an observance every year since then from 99 until 2014 um the human rights campaign fund announced a theme to go with ncod every year uh but they haven't in the past six years which i found interesting Mm. um because you know the gays they love a theme Um, (laughs) (laughs) so i found it odd that we stopped doing a theme kind of like like world aids day every year has a theme there's usually like a global theme and then the like aids coalition in the u.s kind of does a theme which kind of bothers me because like why can't we just have one and be done with it uh (laughs) instead of confusing or conflicting stuff so i i don't know quite why they um they stop doing a theme every year for ncod but um, I, I'm one yeah, of those so there's... weird gays who are, who's who is like not everything needs a theme, Janet. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Um, so but, yeah, but, but how can we I celebrate the same? Can... Like how how will I know how to to accessorize? You know like... what? When you come out, you have to be yourself. So why don't you just be yourself? Done. There. True. There's your. There's your theme bitch <laughs> I like the disappearing demon when he throws up shade nice yeah the shade is still there it's just Damon isn't there it's kind of like yes. a magic act there we go hold on let me see if I can do it maybe can I do it that way oh you can't see it oh wait let me try the other one oh nope eh. <laughs> no 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 shit anyway <laughs> it's fine it's fine right so learning things about skype magic yeah so um initially the idea was grounded that the feminist and gay liberation spirit of the personal being political was kind of the emphasis about coming out to like so that people would learn that they actually do know people who are lgbtq Mm -hmm. um actually at the time it was just lgbt um because visibility was like the key factor. Like lots of people would kind of say that they don't know any gays or lesbians or bisexuals or trans people. Mm -hmm. And the concept was, well, actually, if you come out to other people, then they do know them. And it makes more of an impact in terms of like our social well-being, our mental health, um, and can make our broader human community more diverse. And I think it has had some good positive ripple effects. Like I think the advances that have happened in terms of our communities are Mm -hmm. because of visibility. So true, true, true. That is true. I think, you know, where I would say where we were probably in the 80s, I mean, granted, you know, some of us weren't really, while we were alive, we may not have been aware, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but I think from like strides from the, the beginnings to now have been, you know, monumental in regard in terms of visibility. We still have some ways to go. We still have some issues to, to um, get through and hopefully not backtrack on certain things as we go into the current election year. Um, but for the most part, like we've made great strides. Um, I'm happy and blessed that we have. Yeah. Yeah. And so over time, I think coming out has been less celebrated um, as celebrities have come out or been more open Uh, I don't know if I want to say honest, as they've been more forthcoming about their personal into the public realm. Mm -hmm. I think there's been less and less importance because I think we've we've entered a new concept in society where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're gay. Mm -hmm. Like like so people I don't want to say are indifferent about it, but it's kind of like revealing your spirituality or your religion. Mm -hmm. Um, 
uh, it used to be for a long time we used to talk about the hidden minorities. Mm -hmm. So, like, Damon cannot um, kind of hide his uh, race, you know, his his ethnicity. Um, he has no choice but to wear it, uh, apparent to the world. That's what would be considered an uh, observable like aspect of being a minority. Hidden minorities are, are usually about things that people don't know about you. So mm -hmm. LGBTQIA plus tends to be a, called a hidden minority. Um, mm -hmm. Your spiritual, uh, you know, religious choices are sometimes considered a hidden minority. It's an, an aspect of you that people are not aware of or not easily apparent, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I think that, you know, as, as more and more individuals have come forward and people are aware and as society progresses, um, I guess is how I want to say it, like younger generations have less interest in it being a thing, quote unquote. <laughs> um, so they're, I don't want to say they're indifferent, but they're just kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's become um, more of a, a quote unquote norm. It's just becomes, it's like, oh, that's just another thing. And, and not something where it's like, oh, you're gay? Right, because there were few and far between. Mm -hmm. um, not that there's a lot of people who are out, but I think um, the celebrity visibility and um, the HRC index, the fact that corporations, companies, uh, entities have been involved in pride year after year. Like a lot of that definitely makes an impression mm -hmm. on folks and that it's all about visibility. And I think the more that there's awareness and visibility, the less, um, uh, I don't know how else to say it, like oddity there is or um, fetishization maybe, you know, that it's, you know, I think for a long, long time there was kind of like this strange phase of oh i know a gay and it's like <laughs> actually you probably know a bunch of gays you just don't know that yet <laughs> so probably know several it's definitely a different atmosphere than it would have been like like when i came out back in the late 90s i mean despite the fact that i should have come out like four maybe five years before that i should because I, but first I need to come out to myself for that matter it, mm -hmm. that time of that sort of thing being broadly acceptable mm -hmm. um, is was was not it in just the the 20 years 20 plus years that it's been since I come out things have changed so much to make it where People coming out is less of a scandal, if a scandal at all. Yeah. Or or people have have less to fear because other people understand that this is just a thing that it's 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 out there. It's not that big of a deal because that's just them saying who you are. They are. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. and it's not it's just like, I don't like fish. Oh, you don't like fish? Oh, okay. I'm gay. Oh, you're okay? Okay. Right. It, you know, it, 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 it's just the, the how how it ends up being. And people just think of it as just learning something, just learning something new, like anything else about somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so with like awareness and that kind of stuff, there's, I don't know how many more frontiers there are to coming out um but one of them recently that surprised me because i didn't see this on the radar so there's a, a couple links here mm -hmm. um one of them is about that the nfl yes that nfl the national football league one of what is sometimes referred to as one of the manliest sports um <laughs> in american sports industry uh, created a National Coming Out Day campaign video. Mm. Um, so there will be two links. One is to the CNN article about it, which came out uh, just yesterday on the 10th, I think. Um, and then there's also going to be a link to the 30-second uh, promo 
uh, public service announcement video on YouTube. Uh, and basically, um, so the Football League is celebrating National Coming Out Day with a video featuring openly gay and bisexual former players such as Ryan O'Callaghan, Jeff Rohr, R.K. Russell, and Wade Davis, um, encouraging current LGBTQ players to come out. Um, it goes on to say that uh, they are also joined by others um, in the league who are supportive but not do not identify. Mm. Uh, and so when you watch it, it is not a presumption that everybody in the video is LGBTQ. Mm. Um, but some have come out. Um, notably, everyone that's in the video came out after they retired. So that's kind of shining a spotlight on the fact that there are no current out players in the NFL. Um, which has its whole thing to like, yeah. deal with in that case. So uh, I thought that that was very interesting because um, if I had to guess, professional sports here in the U.S. is probably one of the last frontiers yeah. in which out individuals are like non-existent and or not represented. Yeah. It's... It's been interesting, like watching the NFL, especially progress. They have, they have, especially within the last year, or hell, the last few months, honestly, they have gotten a little bit more progressive, respectful of their stances um, mm -hmm. on 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 matters that are probably you know political hot button topics, kind of thing. And this is kind of a great. I'm happy that they came out with it, <laughs> no pun intended, but um, I I hope that it is a sign that there's going to be more respectability and um, res understanding of like you know the care the people who are different that are that is that are or were in their league of of of, of manliness as it were. Um, cause it's, you know, it's, there's, 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 there is a history, there is a very tarnished history, uh, in the NFL in regards to like LGBT, um, people and, and other, you know, you know, minorities. So I'm, I hope that they are going to, this is the start of, if not the continuation of more things to come. Well, and it, it, as you said, this is considered to be like one of the more manly ones. Uh, yeah. So this was probably the sport out of all the major sports uh, that I know of uh, uh, that where this t this type of promo, this type of thing, I would think that would be the last one to do it. But as far as I'm aware, they're the first one to do it. I don't remember anything like basketball related or baseball related related on this sort of thing and it's just kind of like wow th this is this is huge in, in my my opinion um, mm -hmm. and, I, I, and, and I especially because they, they're they're like as we speak uh, i don't know what football games are going on now but apparently they're playing it during the during the the sunday night football uh either later tonight or they played it already. I don't know uh, because yeah, I don't depending on, because I don't work Sundays. These, yeah, depending on I when it know. depending on when it when it aired. Yeah, when football was airing tonight, you you feel like it probably aired. Tonight. Well, I will tell you this from my experience having to do DVR audits for uh, several hundred channels of, of uh, football games. There's a lot of football going on on Sundays. Oh, I'm sure. Yes, there's a lot yes, of football. I'm... So, so football has already started today. So, uh, but yeah, uh, this I was pleasantly like surprised about. I wouldn't say mm -hmm. shocked or I can't believe it. I'm like, oh, it was just yeah. it, it was something unexpected. Uh, yeah, opinion. agreed. So, uh, and and I really really appreciate it, uh, especially getting the people who they know what those LGBT. Uh, you uh, 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 people in the football league are feeling right now and they want to show first hey 
I came out, you can come out, and then f seeing the people who are currently in the league, while they may not be identified as LGBTQIA, they at least are there being like, hey, there's we're here and we we don't care if you're queer. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. we're we're here if if you are we're here to support you and showing that the people who are already in the league and are are active players um that if they if someone does come out it, and i also like that the fact that they say when you're ready mm -hmm. which is one thing about national coming out day it's like hey if you're looking to come out and you want to try to get something to kind of like put it all together as being like a, a day to do it, a deadline to do it or something like that. National coming that day. Good day to do it. Do you need to? No, because no. you really need to do it when you are ready to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it there. We're not trying to national coming out days. The message isn't come out now. It's, trying to show the support that the, you do have the support structure that if you do come out you you are still loved by people so um and having that message inside this video which is how i'm i'm feeling it and uh, i found it i like it i like it a lot cool good on you nfl uh i'm <laughs> sorry i've been purchasing i purchased baseball masks instead of football masks but i will <laughs> Now I think I'll pop over to Fanatics and get some uh, Vikings masks. I have to get Vikings masks, although I probably should get a Cowboys mask just because I live in te Texas. But, you know, the thing. Anyways, moving on. Uh, anyway. Um, I will say that at the end of the video, there's a great multicolored version of the NFL logo. Mm -hmm. um, that I like. It's not the traditional six colors. I think it's the modified eight mm -hmm. um but it's the only place i've ever seen that version of the logo and i was kind of discouraged because i was looking around because i'm like that's pretty fucking cool mm -hmm. uh and i wanted to like draw attention to that like specific thing like hey look because i know in the major league baseball a number of sports teams have done pride versions of their own logo and stuff so um, I wasn't able to to spot that necessarily anywhere so yeah oh. i think the nfl obviously still has more room to you know do things okay and, and, and i do have to say that nfl i recommend that you start putting out merchandise because um i appreciate people who do merchandise stores and make money off of us from these things more because they know we're there we know what they know we're a community and i'm good with it I just realized I shared it through my through Skype, so it might show up on the the. No, it doesn't. Oh, good. Thank God. Woo. Oh, <laughs> nice little rainbow uh, NFL logo. Yeah. With all okay. eight colors. Yeah. Celebrats, come yeah. on, people. spell check your shit. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. Celebrate. Like like Breaks. Four, five, six. Yeah, they got the six base colors of the rainbow and, and then uh, brown and black. The black and a brown. The black and brown colors, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and there's the um, the national coming out. There's a with it in the from the video. You know, it takes all of us. Huh. Good to know. Sorry, this is what Google Images does to me. You gave me, <laughs> you gave, you gave me a challenge, Gary. <laughs> Sorry. No, but it's good that you found the stuff. Um, they actually have a, a Pride page uh, with the NFL, which I find interesting. That has the color logo on it. Yeah. Um, this is from back in 2019. Anyways, so there yeah, that was that was one new development this year that I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, to talk about and draw some attention to for this year's National Coming Out Day. Uh, Cindy Lauper. Yes, that's Cindy Lauper. Um, Girls Just Want to Have Fun herself released a new lyric video uh, on YouTube for her song Time After Time for National Coming Out Day. Um, so this is a Rolling Stone article. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this particular article, uh, they end up linking, or I think they have embedded the YouTube video. And it's kind of like the 
paper craft art style that you may have seen um, some artists do. So it's just her traditional original release of the song, um, but it has a, obviously a whole new imagery to it. Um, so it is putting up all the lyrics to the song as it moves along, but it's um, it's kind of fun to watch how it like pops up the words, but then it also has all this imagery. So there's lots of rainbow stuff, um, different types of couples coming together and embracing. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it's the created by Malika Holder, a 22 year old graphic designer and animator uh, illustrator from the UK. So I thought that was yeah. pretty cool. I will only ask um, if we can update the link title to spell the correct name of Cindy. Oh, yeah. That's easily doable. Sorry. Ain't over retentive, Damon. Because I love Cindy Lauper. So, yeah. yeah. Cindy. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I thought that was pretty neat. And I was like, she's yeah. always been a huge ally advocate of the community. Um, so, uh, I was like, neat. So, actually, like, the whole point of all these links and stuff was I was like, oh, there appears to be um a bunch of things happening uh you know so that appears yeah. to be a repeat link i don't know why <laughs> um, the today article yeah oh well must, it's fine i must have goofed that it's okay. uh also as a surprise to me facebook coming out 2020 celebrating national coming out day uh yesterday on the app they posted a 45 minute video in which demi lovato and tan france kind of host a discussion about coming out day and there is a storyline throughout the course of the 45 minutes where they follow a um black gentleman uh coming out to either i didn't watch the whole thing yet uh either to his best friend and or family member mm. uh which i thought was a really good um aspect of kind of showing someone's journey in coming out mm. um so yeah i thought that that was uh that was pretty good. I wanted to watch that. I just didn't have time. I'll probably try to look at it after we are done today. Um, yeah. I will, though. I appreciate. I don't know if, if you have the Facebook app on your phone. I believe. Um, I believe it's still showing up. Let me check real quick. Um, they have in their little, like the Facebook part, they have a little um, animated graphic um, for National Coming Out Day. Um, it starts with like a person looking into a mirror and then a person embracing them. And then all of the little, you know, face the word, the letters in Facebook become other people. And it kind of becomes this like proud and out kind of moment. And I was really happy to see that. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's cool. And it, they've actually had it, I think all weekend. Cause this year, I think it wasn't just today. Like, I've been seeing people celebrating coming out, like, all weekend long. Um, not that there's, you know, anything wrong with that. I'm just thinking, I'm just, I'm noticing, I noticed it a lot more today, but I've seen it all weekend. Mm -hmm. So, that's kind of cool. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, I think um, the, I agree with you, Damon. I think this year of all the years I've seen more representation for a longer period of time mm -hmm. around NCOD. Like, I don't think it's making the splash to the level I personally would like it to. Um, and it's really difficult to gauge it because, like, Pride is a beast in and of itself. You know, like, Pride yeah. Month, Pride Weekend, you know. Like, everything is, like, you know, shoving rainbows down your throat, kind of, like, obnoxious in a way. Um, so this isn't to that level. Uh yeah. So, you know, it feels it's coming across a little bit more to me like a heritage celebration mm -hmm. kind of thing, um, which is not a good equivalent, but that's kind of the scale I see a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then the last link here um, is app.com, a website I've not heard of before um, that uh, you can subscribe <sighs> to. And it's kind of like a, a get a, the feel that it's a national news kind of coverage and so they have an article mm -hmm. um called uh hang on 
Uh, National Coming Out Day 2020, LGBTQ members share their stories. So it's a whole series of like little brief uh, paragraphs and videos of people talking about their stuff. And lo and behold, I was pleasantly surprised to see um, a video about a gentleman here in Erie oh. uh, that is a gay black man that I don't know. Not that I need to know him. Um, but I was like, oh, who are you? Uh, so... <laughs> I, I mean, it's just uh, not that I should know everybody, but I guess if it was a face I already knew, I'd be like, oh, OK. You know, like I wouldn't think anything about it. But even to me, it's refreshing to see new faces um, for representation and uh, speaking out. So, yeah. So and then I forgot until just before the show to keep scrolling to look through the rest of the postings. And then lo and behold, there's Michael. Um who in pre-show we were kind of talking about, he serves on the Drench for uh, board and has been involved in the run for many years. Um, he has been uh, involved in, he's had his fingers in a lot of pies, I guess is the way to say it. <laughs> um, he has, like it says in his thing, he's been out since May of 92. Uh, and he helped put together the, the pride picnic that I've been involved in for decades now. Um, he, yeah, like I it, like there isn't anything that's LGBTQ that he doesn't know about or hasn't like somehow either attended or like helped promote or something. So yeah. Mm. Um so I thought that was pretty cool, you know, and I like the fact that it's very much these are real people briefly telling their story to kind of put a face on something. Nice. I got I got a question. Uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 slightly off the topic um what do you think about the fact that um the united states canada and australia observe lgbt history month or probably now extended to lgbtqia plus uh history month uh in october to coincide with national coming out day mm. kind of kill two birds with one stone because uh, apparently uh, it is in February in the UK and May in Ireland. For coming out or? For History Month. Oh. Well, uh, or it's my like, first. I'm not sure which came first because I didn't read this whole article or anything. My first reaction is just because Stonewall happened in June of 69 does not give us claim to mm -hmm. like say that the whole world has to celebrate pride in the month of june like we do sure so if they have an equivalent in their own country that's awesome i'd like to learn more about it so if it's at a different time of year even better um yeah. you know i'm i'm down with celebrating pride whenever people want to celebrate it like i know even in the u.s even though for the most part, June is considered Pride Month because of when Stonewall happened and mm -hmm. the hotter, lower, like contiguous 48 states of the U.S. That is not necessarily when Pride is celebrated because it's just too they damn just hot. They just want to make sure it's not going to have heat stroke. Great. <laughs> yeah. So um, and don't get me wrong. Up in up in the north, or, um, it still can be pretty hot on <laughs> coming out or, or, or sure. Pride. Dairy I mean, Pride, true. but yeah, I, I, it's just like, is this trying to to just like compress everything into one time, or is it more of like, or would it be better if like each of these different events, like Pride Month, June, history, uh, LGBTQIA History Month, August, uh, uh, National Coming Out Day happens in October, so you kind of get these little things spread out through the entire year or something well, like that. It's... This is just like, throwing off, or is it just oh. like? Like, hey, you know what? We need a history month. We right. got National Coming Out Day that's in October. That's a great time to also have history month. Since history month is the entire month and coming out day is just one day within that month. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Like I'm looking at this. Um, it's funny because there's LGBT. So in the United States, it's LGBT Pride Month is June. And then LGBT History Month is October. Mm -hmm. right. So, that's um, 
and it was started in October of 94. Sorry, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was founded by Missouri high school history teacher Rodney Wilson. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Sorry, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to read this verbatim to everyone, but that's kind of the, the whole premise right. behind it. Um, and okay, here we go. There we go. October was chosen by Wilson as the month for the celebration because the first and second LGBT marches on Washington in 1979 and 1987 were in October. National Coming Out Day is on October 11th, chosen to mark the date of the second march on Washington for lesbian and gay rights in 1987. And October is it within the academic calendar year. So mm-hmm. that's why. Okay. Um, yeah, like I agree with you, Jeff. Like way back um, when National Coming Out Day was equivalent to or kind of as big as Pride was, I remember now thinking back like to that and being like, yeah, why are we like doing these two different things? But I think the distinction is about celebrating the history versus the pride, like the coming mm-hmm. out or, or sorry. I think the distinction is one is about coming out and recognizing our, our history, our cultural like stuff. And the other one is just more celebratory um, in general. Probably mm-hmm. if you had to clarify, I would say one is really about like our background and the other one is about our like progression of recognition Mm -hmm. and and rights and stuff yeah one is about um, telling the story one is about celebrating the story right and for those of us um we didn't haven't talked about it yet but um with matthew shepherd's passing in the beginning of october back in 98 i think that that also has a big impact Mm -hmm. Um, for those of us that were alive at the time uh you know he um had been assaulted Um, beaten and tortured on October 6th and then he passed away on October 12th Mm -hmm. and I remember when he passed away how it was just right after National Coming Out Day Um, and being that he was three years younger than me um, Mm -hmm. it really had an impact on me because I think a lot of us who were close to his age especially um, felt that it could have been any of us Mm -hmm. Um, culturally as a country we were in a very different place then and we still might be feeling some of that now, given the current climate of uh, what appears to be a rise in the openness of people who are uh, homophobic, racist, misogynist, bigoted. You know, I think that there there might be some uh, concern in terms of, you know, folks as to whether or not they feel they can um, be authentically themselves. So, yeah, I mean, to me, Perhaps from an outside community standpoint, the messaging may be confusing for people. They might be like, I don't get it. Like, you do this thing in June, you do this thing in October. Like, what the hell? Uh, but I guess I feel different about it. And and for me, it's on a personal level. So I don't have an official day that I remember when I came out. Mm-hmm. Same here. I, I came out happened, but... in the fall of 92. Mm-hmm. I remember. I was in college. I was a freshman in college. Mm-hmm. Um, I was struggling with my uh, sexual orientation, my concept of self identity. Um, I was suicidal. I didn't know quite how I was going to live my life. And so um, I, the girlfriend that I'd had in my senior year of high school had broken up with me in August, right before I went away to college. Um, so I was really struggling with like the fact that she broke up with me and didn't give me a reason. Um, mm. And then all of that resolved itself anyways. Uh, Cause then I finally <laughs> got a chance to talk to her and find out. And then I was like, well, that was a lame ass reason. But anyways, um, <laughs> well, it was, I I'll talk about it another time, but so I chose for myself to, to adopt national coming out day as my coming out day. Mm. Because if I started college in mid-August of 92 and I was in class sessions, but it wasn't my birthday yet, (laughs) then it's probably right around the very beginning of October, perhaps really close to to October 11th when I finally came out to myself Mm. and then started coming out to other people. 
um, I had known since I was a teenager that I was attracted to um, male represented, you know, individuals um, and that I liked that, but I struggled for a very long time with my attraction. And it wasn't until I actually met gay individuals in my freshman year of college that I was like, oh, like I'm in an environment where that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of my coming out process. So now fast forward to 2020 and I'm like thinking back and I'm like, oh, girl, that was 28 years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> like if we're still doing this in two years from now, I will have been out for 30 years. Mm. Um, happy gay know, anniversary. Right? Thank you. So I, <laughs> oh, look, I was just saying recently to some people I know that are very close to me, I couldn't have pictured when I was like that troubled and, and suicidal when I was younger, what my life was going to become. Mm hmm. And the fact that I lived through that and came out the other side has been a key motivational factor to even when my life gets really bad um, and I struggle with severe depression, with, um, you know, despair and mm -hmm. really questioning what, like, what I'm going to do with my life and the choices that I've made and where I am, I never, I, I didn't get back to that point only because I already had lived through it and knew how it can be on the other side. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't want to say that it was all like positive because mm -hmm. it's, you know, there's ups and downs. Um, but I've had so many good experiences like in the, in the 28 years since then, I have now developed a chosen family. All of my best friends are people since that time in my life. Um, and, and I've had some really great experiences and, and I don't regret my decisions that I've made because they've, you know, they're, I believe that they've made me better as a person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, so for me, um, National Coming Out Day has a very personal significance, mm -hmm. but it's not because I chose to come out on October 11th. Um, I don't know what the date was and I don't know if there's any way I could ever find out. <laughs> the closest I could probably get is to come out to, is to find Rich Woolley wherever you are in the universe, sweetheart. Um, Cause I lost touch with you from college. You're the first person I ever came out to. Um, and child, ooh, she was something else. Uh, <laughs> skinny black uh, clarinet player in the marching band gave no fucks any second of the day. She was so flaming out. She burned and scorched everything everywhere she went <laughs> and actually repressed and scared some of us in our freshman year of college because she was so much to deal with. Mm. Um, and, and come to find out a small grouping of us came out to him slowly one by one by one. Um, oh. and, and I think she kind of got tired of us. <laughs> and it was kind of like, oh, y'all need to talk to each other. I ain't got time for this. Like. Because we all knew each other, but we weren't yeah. coming out to we each, other. each other. Yeah. We were coming out to Rich, and he was kind of like, uh-uh, no, child, oh, I ain't got time for this. Like, no, like, you, 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 and you. <laughs> like, I'm not going to tell you why you all need to talk to each other, but you all need to talk to each other. Right. Y'all are sisters, you just don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we all we all kind of did. We a group of us we came out in our freshman year to each other. Um, we're still, for the most part, in touch with each other at least via Facebook. Um, nice. We're not, you know, as tight as we were back then necessarily. But yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting journey since then. Um, yeah, two of us have gotten married. Oh. Yeah, I'm trying to think through all the things. Like one uh, became a, a corporate international language interpreter, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, one is a principal of a school district. Um, mm. uh, yeah, I mean, like you know, we've we've all kind of gone on um, to interesting things in our personal lives. But so, like, if we could timeline it back, like he's the only one I could get a, a, a shorter window to approximate. If for some reason he could even remember what the night yeah. I went and talked to him in his room down the hall from mine, and twenty eight years ago, right, and, right, <laughs> it could find it. You know, girl, you remember when I came and talked to you, and you were like, Ooh. "Get out of my room," because uh, <laughs> his philosophy was kind of like, 
uh, child people know. And I was like, what? And he was like, you ain't fooling nobody. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> he, um, he was, he was something else. Oh yeah. Still, still is probably to this day. He, I just never met anybody who was, yeah, uh, like not extravagantly flamboyant, but just so authentically honest. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was it was scary yet refreshing at the same time. I remember I was like, "What the <laughs> hell?" Like, like okay, yeah, like you 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 a different kind of being. And then um, yeah, and then uh, like not that it's infectious, but then after that, I apparently became very obnoxious and annoying. Because um, <laughs> in my freshman year, one of my best friends from college, I'll never forget. Like in my sophomore year. Stephanie said to me, she's like, oh, I'm so glad that you grew out of that. And I was like, what? And she's like, oh, you were obnoxious. <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on. And she's like, no, no, you don't understand. Everything was gay. Like that tree was gay. That flagpole was gay. That stop sign was gay. Like she's like, everything was gay. Gay, 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 gay. Everything needed to have a pride sticker on it. Everything needed it. Like she's like, she's like, you were a lot. <laughs> you know, one of those things where it's like when you finally do it yeah it just kind of releases a, a, a dam which kind of floods everything with gayness for yeah. a while and then it calms down yeah probably what, what what was happening it's like you come out you feel oh there's a breath of fresh air it's all open and and gay Right, and then, then eventually you're like, yeah, you know what? It's, being gay is just like uh, what I was doing before. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to. You you don't have to push it. Like, yeah, you don't have to. You can calm down just a little bit. Push it. Push it, <laughs> push it real good. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it's... that's not usually the the push it song that I usually sing. Whenever I hear push it, <laughs> he's like, "This is the noise that keeps me awake." Anyways, uh, Lord, I, mm. I have to think. I think I, I know I came out to myself while I was in college, probably that first year. And I think college is one of those things. I know we, we, you know, you can laugh about it, but it is eye opening. In a lot of ways, you're away from your, you know, cloister of a life, you know, growing up and whatever, especially if you go away, you know, mm -hmm. to college um, and you can kind of really be yourself um, mm -hmm. or learn more about yourself that you maybe kept hidden or maybe pushed to the side because you weren't sure how others would react to it. Um, and you get a fresh platform. Yeah. And you Nobody get, knows like, you, fresh... so it's, you're yeah, introducing yeah. yourself, and you get to introduce yourself as a one. I mean, I was it's on the some... Buy Now, Gay Later plan. <laughs> Hush you. In some ways, no, yes. I, I understand. <laughs> but, um, um, oh, gosh, I, I know it was because of, like, being away from like family and my religious background and everything else that it sort of everything kind of clicked and made sense. Um, and then I start, you know, also yay internet. Cause <laughs> that, it, really that was Damon and mine's a big thing at that time. That, that, that surely helps mm -hmm. is the internet. Yep. Like having, having, <laughs> having chat rooms like m for m you know back in like the AOL even Yahoo chat days I was in Yahoo chat if you remember oh, gay.com <laughs> or gay.com or all of those things like uh, I those... wouldn't I wouldn't be in Austin Texas if it weren't for gay.com <laughs> but yeah if you didn't have like thank you for you know the internet I will honestly say that because that's kind of where I learned more about myself and was able to represent myself authentically yes you, i had the veil of of the internet as kind of like a um a small like small buffer 
but you know, eventually you're going to meet somebody like, you know, you're going to have to talk to someone else. And it was, it was an eye opening experience for me. Um, God, I know within the first months of me being at school, at college, um, I realized I was gay and I had my first boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Granted, the boyfriend was married to a woman and was in my hometown, but that's neither here nor there. That's a whole other story. Um, but it it was that allowing myself to kind of res- understand what was tr- what I truly felt and how I truly felt, and having a platform, be it Gay.com, Yahoo Chat, AOL Chat, to kind of allow that. Um, to 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 come out. <laughs> um, that was kind of the what I needed. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I would have if how I would have felt if I had someone like you had Gary, like um, the very like flamboyantly like gay person. If that's who I had, I. I feel like I had someone um, similar, but oh, stop it! <laughs> but um, but in general, uh, I don't recall. I don't recall having a conversation with someone one on one. You know, mm-hmm. I don't recall coming out to one person. Um, I came out to myself first, and then gradually over time, you know, I joined the. Um, it was called Ace League. It's something else now, but it was the basically the LGBT group on campus, and that kind of became my thing. And I was fine with that, and it helped. Like, like Jeff, you mentioned, like you know, the beauty of being away at college is you have a restart. No one really knows you, you know, there. So that really helped, kind of like to allow myself to express myself you know um although i don't think i ever no that's not true because yeah i do i remember i did drag um i started dragging college haha um but yeah it's just it's it was it's a good feeling to have an opportunity whether it's just a chat online that kind of opens up that door mm-hmm Maybe it's not all the way open yet, but at least it's something. Um, and I agree with um, Jeff, what you said earlier about like, just because National Coming Out Day is today doesn't necessarily mean you have to come out today. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate the date and I appreciate the sentiment behind it, but I also respect those who aren't ready, that can't really come or can't come out for one reason or another you know it's it's um while it's great to have like representation and 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 what have you it doesn't have to be you if that makes sense right like you don't have to you don't have to be the gay person that everybody knows if you don't want to be or the lesbian or the you know whatever you don't have to be that person There we go. I'm reading the live chat. Some people are revealing some personal things that I think are nice um, talking about their coming out. So, oh. yeah, I, I agree with both of you. I think, you know, the coming out is is when you choose to do it, whether it has some significance or not. I mean, on this podcast and years past, we've made the joke about how the holidays, it used to be, seemed to be like the prompt to want to come out to your family. Sure. Um, but that is not required at all. It is not necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and I hope in today's day and age, people uh, think through things more and want to have less dramatic effect, uh, so to speak, on people um, by, you know, when when and how and they choose to come out to. So mm-hmm. I really kind of feel, you know, we've moved it definitely into a phase of do it your way, when you want, how you want. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, nobody says you have to throw a ticker tape parade. No. That is not a requirement. 
I don't recommend using a website to tell your parents. <laughs> That's fair. Personal I experience. think most I think most people would prefer that you tell them like that you invest in them uh the the way and the energy and, and the you know how much they mean to you is is how, is reciprocal to how you tell them. So if they are close to you in your life, you may want to talk to the one on one, you know, um, and have that. And if you feel that you can't, uh, that's OK. Uh, some people are better at communicating in other methods like writing, you know, uh, a letter, an email, mm -hmm. um, you know, something. Some people choose, you know, a social media uh, outlet to post something, um, maybe record a, I don't know, a, a video. Who knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we've got much better options than I had back in 1998, 99, or 2000. I don't know. remember which. Yeah. Oh, I remember I was in college at the time. Um, yeah. And then there's also the process of, as I, I, I kind of joked about it a little bit earlier, with, but the buy now, gay later plan, <laughs> which is, well, which is, it, it, I think it's me doing the gradual version of coming out to myself uh, because when I started, I'm like, I, I it was college. They so told my best friend, Jen, uh, that, hey, uh, I'm bi. And then we started looking at guys and such. And then at a certain point, I don't remember everything that happened that day. All I remember is we were in her dorm room, but and we ended up starting to make out and was getting to the point where she offered to take off her shirt and I panicked and ran back to my dorm room and didn't talk to her for like a week mm -hmm. <laughs> or had any connection. And that whole time was me processing that I am totally not into women. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... Right. Dumbass, you are not bi. <laughs> you are totally gay. And, well, and like, there were some emotional things. We ended up getting over it, but it, we, it was within like a week or two. It wasn't. It wasn't that long. But uh, I, I always like to joke with her, and she knows I'm joking. Uh, that she's the one who made me gay. Lord. When I uh, I. I understand what you mean when you say that, Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, when I came out in 92, I initially came out as bisexual. Um, Rich, amongst other gays who I had come out to, all challenged me. Um, I was not happy about the challenge. Um, <laughs> they all basically, I say challenge, but the act is, is that they actually outright dismissed my coming out as bisexual. They all basically had the attitude of, girl, you're gay. Just whatever. Um and that really kind of lit a fire under my ass. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, that experience has made me pretty much one of the most defensive people about folks that want to that want to let others know that they are bisexual. Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to say that they want to be bisexual or, or choose to be bisexual. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. The fact that they choose to talk to people about that mm -hmm. and let it be known is the bigger piece. I've, I've dated um bisexual men and it you know was an experience in and of itself because i had to deal with my own prejudice about mm -hmm. wondering about like you know the fact that they're bisexual and what that means about my value hello counseling um <laughs> so you know but but the reality is you know i i i get defensive when people you know used to say things and i don't really hear it too much anymore now but for a long time i think when we were younger there was a lot of like oh you just haven't met the right person you haven't yeah. met your mind you want to have it yeah. all blah 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 like a whole lot of bullshit yeah and i think people are now much more um uh, aware of how ignorant that is and to mm -hmm. not really um kind of say these things so how you how you represent yourself is your selection you know yeah. whether you choose to be out or not or and what you want to uh, say about that? Well, and and the nice the, the thing that I I kind of learned like because I had that kind of some of those experiences as well was was thinking that it was you're either straight or gay and all those people who says bye are tricking themselves mm -hmm. or something for a long time and then uh, eventually I I came around like that's really dumb. <laughs> 
Yeah. Is if somebody says they're bi, they're bi. If mm -hmm. if if and you take it for them as if they're they're bi the whole time. Maybe they'll end up being kind of like me and thinking they're bi to begin with, but then end up going one way or the other. Um, you know, or and they may still be like on because it really is a spectrum. And when we yeah. say a spectrum, it's not just like on a scale of like one to five mm -hmm. to where you are. Um, it's more of like a scale of one to a million. <laughs> there's all these like tiny micro things where there's, hey, I can appreciate a good looking guy. Uh, I think they're very attractive. Uh, do I want to have sex with them? Not really. I'm not really wanted to have sex with guys but i could find it very attractive that's probably mm -hmm. could be kind of like somewhere between the hetero and and mid midpoint by or the other way around it's like i can find women absolutely attractive and sexy and everything like that but eh, probably never going to have sex with them more on the other side etc but there's all these kind of like micro things in in, in the meantime where it's 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 such a big huge range of where people can be and i i would d definitely feel like you could probably categorize somewhere in there a this here is considered as bisexual but maybe they lean a little more to one side or the other but they're still bisexual or something you're you're either super gay or not so gay <laughs> But well, you're still gay, you know? I, I, right? I think I think the reality is that sexuality is very fluid, mm. um, and it's constantly shifting and moving. And we, as humans, have a difficult time with fluid concepts because we, our brain likes to label things and compartmentalize them. So it's mm -hmm. left, right, up, down, yes, no, right, wrong, uh, you know, black, white, whatever. And and we can recognize like the median um, variables, you know, the, the, the gradation, but it's a, we have a hard time with that. It's like, well, is it gray? Is it slate? Is it, you know what I mean? Is it stone? Yeah. Like, you know, people get really kind of are pissy. Are you a top about, or a bottom? Are you versatile? Or are you kind well, of like a versatile bottom or a versatile top? <laughs> right. So, um, you know, I'm when I first came out as, as bisexual, my whole thing was I knew that I loved looking at women's bodies like I could find the beauty of them. I've never had a problem mm -hmm. looking at a naked woman's body. But when I was, I don't want to say challenged, I'll say when I was questioned about sex with a woman, um, I was asked outright, like, have you ever had sex with a woman? No. Would you like to have sex with a woman? Have you thought about, do you desire having sex with a woman? I was like, mm, no. And that was the definitive, like, then girl, you're gay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that was the, that was the simplicity of the measurement, I guess, at the time back in 92. And I kind of took offense to that. I was like, how dare you try to compartmentalize me and put me in a box and blah, blah, blah. You know, like I, mm -hmm. I should be able to make the decision for myself. Over time, I quickly came to the realization that they weren't really wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were being dismissive yes, of, of my choice. <laughs> but in the end, I realized like I had three girls, uh, three girlfriends in high school. I never had sex with any of them. And looking back, I didn't want to have sex with any of them. Like it was not mm -hmm. a strong desire or whatever. Um, and because I was in college and I had started becoming sexually active and I learned like, oh, yes, yes, this, this, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like, you know, like all the boxes are checked. The fireworks go off. Like everything's happening. Like, you know, that was the revelation for me. Um, and since then, you know, I have learned more about myself and I'm like, yeah, I, I you know. I yeah. can see naked women like in my presence. It's not going to phase me one way or another. And because I'm not stimulated, because I'm not interested, that has helped me define for myself. I don't see myself as that uh, kind of an individual that I would ascribe myself as bisexual. So mm -hmm. like appreciating something does not make you that. Um, yeah. I mean, like you could you could be this is a really bad analogy. You could be a vegetarian and appreciate you know, uh, barbecue, it doesn't mean you want to eat the barbecue. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's just kind of like you recognize that it's a thing and it exists and that other people enjoy it. And that's just all there is to it. Mm -hmm.
I don't know if that was a good analogy. Anyways, yeah, yeah. probably not the greatest, <laughs> but yeah, I, I can get your your. Idea. I get what you're what you're getting at. Like I, I appreciate, I I enjoy watching uh, cooking shows where they cook fish. Am I going to eat it? No. Yeah. Sorry, I'm reading the chat. Um, Dindin said the problem with society doesn't allow sexual freedom because the spectrum is so vast and some people uh, it's literally uh, a lifestyle. Right. Like, mm. I think where the where the confusion comes from and why uh, to tie it back. Well, right. To tie it back to wrapping up the show. I think the reason why National Coming Out Day was kind of a thing was because we wanted to have more representation of the people that others didn't know was gay. Because mm -hmm. when we came out um, in the 90s. A lot of the time, if you had a stereotypical job or mm -hmm. certain affectations or mannerisms, it was like everybody just knew. So if you were a male nurse, a florist, a hairstylist uh, who, you know, or worked in the entertainment industry, Broadway, musicals, like, mm -hmm. you know, there were all these very stereotypical things. It was kind of like gay, 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 gay. Like everyone just kind of like ascribed or labeled you with whether you liked it or not yeah it's so funny i'm going to tell a quick story because uh, when i came here i came here under an internship with a theater company here in town and i was the only gay person like everyone else everyone else well no there was another girl there was, a, there was another girl but everyone else was was not like <laughs> like everyone was like falling on the hetero side of things. And not only that, I noticed it at other theaters as well. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like stereotypical in a lot of ways. But I was just like, like, where are the gays at? <laughs> where are you well. at? I mean, I eventually found them, but it, you know, it but it was funny because at that po at that particular moment of time, I had just come out of college. Um, I was coming into a new city. I was like, I want my gaze. Like, and this is theater. Like, you would expect it, but apparently not here. Stupid stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Can't get booty because anyway. I'm not finding the gaze at the theater. <laughs> well, the and that was part of what. Yeah. That was part of what drew me into the bear community in 2000, like 99, 98, 99 into 2000. My like awareness and um, um, uh, integration and then, you know, being a part of the bear community at that time, there was a huge representation of non-typical gay men. Um, you know, they were hyper masculine. They were, you know, had these blue collar jobs. You know, they were it was it was a lot of like you wouldn't know until they opened their mouth or, you know, they got naked uh, that, you know, that they were gay. It was just kind of one of these things. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's been a big journey since then, obviously, in the past 20 years uh, in our community. But, yeah, it was that was that was another thing about the times that were were different. Then. Yeah. So, yeah. So and coming out has has broadened to to be like you're not just coming out as gay. I mean, that's the three of us were gay, but that's just us uh, because now now it's coming out as trans, uh, which I actually had a friend from high school within this past month had just messaged me saying, "Hey, are you the deaf that went here?" Uh, and I'm like, "Oh my God, are you?" Uh, I'm not sure if he wants me to to out him, but. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, or, or, or say it. So I'm trying to keep it vague. But I knew him as a her. Mm -hmm. And he is no Prior longer. Prior to transition. Her. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, it's very. So it, it, it kind of made me happy, super happy, especially because I had lost touch with him uh, for a long time and actually went looking for some pictures that he drew from me back in the mm -hmm. day. Um, I have, well, pictures of drawings <laughs> that he did. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and and, and it, I couldn't find it, it on my phone. And uh, I I really need to, like, take pictures of them because uh, he even had them framed for me and everything. It was so sweet. Oh. So, um, but yeah. I'm very, very happy uh, for him and uh, his partner. I don't think he ever said if it was 
his husband yeah. or not. But, mm -hmm. oh. but yeah. now that I know, it, and it also kind of gives me a, a thing where I've become a little more aware of, and I think this is kind of the point of, of coming out day is, is this brought, I, I think this has kind of clicked in my mind. Um, the act of uh, um, pronouns and making sure you're using the correct pronouns. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like even in one of the discords, I even just updated my, my username to have my username dash he him because that, those are my pronouns. Um, to, to kind of indicate that and kind of promote that sort of thing thing because yeah. I've seen in some other places as well but yeah I, I think that's one thing it clicked which is also one way that helps like I didn't really personally know like there are people uh, like uh, Pup Cruise for example they uh, uh, they're trans too and I I I had a really big problem, uh, and Perrin, it's another another one. Both of these people have been on the show, um, who I I had for the longest time the hard time of making sure that I'm using the correct pronouns and actually thinking about the pronouns. Mm -hmm. And while I kind of know them through the podcast and acquaintancely, I don't know if that's a really bad word. Um, I knew, I knew this person in high school, and we hung out together. We had jokes, and we had a whole lot of fun together. They were a good friend of mine. And then when he finally reached out to me, and he didn't say anything right away, just kind of like identify him, like, "Oh, really?" And then it, because his name was different, I go, "I don't want to be presumptuous because I'm trying to be polite and everything. Uh, can I ask what your pronouns are?" And then he said he, mm -hmm. and I'm like, cool. And he says, that's not presumptuous. And I'm like, okay, cool. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of that shy guy. I don't want to offend or anything or cause any trouble. So um, it, it kind of give, gave me that little click of how things work. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of what National Coming Out Day is trying to do is trying to be like, hey, if you want to really make sure that everybody is uh, approaching you how you are you you need to make sure that they know um, some people like I, I think uh, in the chat they mentioned it's like sometimes you don't need to come out to people <laughs> you just kind of figure out on their own that case in some sense you're coming out just from from being around them and, and everything but having these exposures to different type of people and, and everything can also help them click in other areas of of the world so yeah. That's my, my yeah. little rant. I don't know, rant, explanation. I don't know. Anything else, or is that the end? Um, there was something that you said, and I completely lost my train of thought okay. uh, just now. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think that um, there will be more to discuss in the future at some point. Maybe it'll be another five years before we revisit the topic. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, if you guys want us to revisit any topic, maybe see if we got any updates about something else. So let us know. There's plenty of ways to do that. Take away. Get my thing up. You can pop over to our website, cupsoutloud.com. You can leave a comment on, on the blog. You can choose an email, cupsoutloud at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to just tell us, you can just give us a ring meeting at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can reach us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Um, you can even just chat with us at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can also see we were recording these shows live at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, usually we know by near the end of the week or on the Sundays. Depends. Depends on how busy we are. We're real people with real jobs and everything. And we're doing this. I'd love of it. Anyways. Uh, but you can support us too by going over to our uh, store on Zazzle at zazzle.com slash cups out loud uh, where you can get things such as this uh, uh, consent is my foreplay tank top that I'm wearing or mm -hmm. any type of different types of shirts with the same design. Uh, we do have a trans one. We do have a drag one. We do have uh, 
pup leather and bear versions. Um, is that all the versions? Am I missing anything? Yes. Okay. No, that's all of them. Sometimes I can't remember what our quote unquote inventory is since it's a paper. <laughs> hey, a little bit better version of a t shirt version of what I'm wearing. There's the bear one. Yeah. That Yay. Gary is showing us. Hey, I'm wearing a bear one too. I was going to I was going to wear this one tonight, but then I was like, oh, but it's National Coming Out Day and I have a Hunters Against Hate t-shirt in like kind of rainbowish colors and my Disney uh, Imagineering rainbow embroidered hat. So it's gay. Or at least I'm making it that way. And I wore a turban. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you got a unicorn shirt on. Yes. With a rainbow. It's a unicorn with the rainbow. Anyways, we got plenty of stuff, including other things like mugs and hats and, and backpacks and such like that over at uh, Zazzle slash Cups Out Loud. Um, you can also pop over to Patreon, become a patron, uh, subscribe to us for every month where you can get these shows a little bit early, um, uh, including the Pros and Pre-Show uh, at uh, patreon.com slash Cups Out Loud. Uh, or if you just want to send us some uh, cash just to see if we can help out and boosting up what we have. Maybe the next person to get a new computer would be Gary. Um, <laughs> you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you could uh, uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify uh, or subscribe to us on Spotify, Google Play, and um, which I think the Google Play stuff is going to become uh, moving over to YouTube music. If I'm getting it correctly, mm. their messaging's kind of weird, but it'll be through the podcast app on Android devices, and I think you can also get it Google Podcasts or something. I don't know what it's called. I don't deal with that <laughs> stuff. I need to stick with Apple stuff. Uh, and Amazon Music is going to have podcasts, and we should be listed there as well. Uh, I still need to figure out that link. I've been lazy on that. In any case, you can find me on the internet. Box, 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 box. Something or other. You can find me at Windrim on Twitch on Sunday mornings or in the afternoons. Uh, playing some D&D. We were having some streaming issues, so uh, you didn't get to see all the Battle Royale. Kriv got through it because I accidentally mm. resed him. Oh, no. Necessarily an accidental res, but uh, I didn't think what was going to happen was going to happen. So, in any case, he won. He gets a very special item. Yay. Damon? Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79 on most bear related sites um, or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me online, I could pretty much be found anywhere as Gabber73. Um, for those of you watching the video feed, you were kind of confused. I was re-showing my shirt because uh, someone in the live chat asked me to show it. So there you go. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't think know. that's I think the shirt meant... they meant. I don't know. I'm not I'm sure. I think it's the one that you were wearing because we can't see the bottom of it. Oh, um, yeah. So it's kind of this like kind of haunted skull in a rainbow thing. It says Hunters Against Hate and White at the bottom. It says hashtag um, we are all family, but this was an exclusive limited edition design and it doesn't exist anymore. So you can't. Oh. So you'd have to go to eBay online to find this bitch. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. Not that I'm selling this one. This is, this is mine. Um, but I'm just saying, Paul at uh, Hunters Against Hate doesn't have it anymore. <laughs> Oh. So, but he has a ton of selections to choose from, including a new fun line of Clue-based Haunters Against mm -hmm. Hate uh, shirts that came out. So, Like Clue the Game? Yes. yes. Clue the Game oh. slash movie. Ah, the movie is so, so good. We might have to have Paul on uh, to <laughs> visit how things are going with HAH, because he's on his, like, his fifth book, I think. Um, hey, and, and you know what? It's almost that time of year, too. It is. Mm. All right. With that, uh, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.